Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, and I'm one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com, where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. Before we start today's video, I'm going to be reading some quotes by survivors about a subject that may be triggering or sensitive for some of you. So today's topic is the sadistic narcissist and sex. And if you feel like this is too much to listen to, please understand that there will be some graphic stuff in what I read and just know yourself and know what's best for you and what's triggering and what is not triggering and um, just so you have some heads up before we start. Okay, so as I said, we're going to be talking about the sadistic narcissist and sex. So hit subscribe and let's get started. Narcissists and sex, they use it for control, right? They use it as power and currency and manipulation and a means of supply for themselves. We know that they do not experience intimacy the same way that a non-narcissistic person does. And they also use the fact that we do experience sex and intimacy together against us. So when you're dealing with someone who is sadistic as well as narcissistic, such as a malignant narcissist, sex can be even more confusing, abusive, and even dangerous. First, let's review and talk about what a sadistic narcissist is. A sadistic narcissist derives pleasure from your pain. Often it's a sexual pleasure that they derive from causing other people pain, and that includes emotional pain. A lot of withholding even is meant to give you pain and they derive a pleasure from that. A lot of the belittling and the shaming, similarly, they derive pleasure from it. And when you combine it with sex and you combine it with intimacy, you have a weapon for control that the narcissist, that the narcissist can use to gain extreme amounts of supply, as well as keep you trauma bonded. It basically, because of your own feelings of connection and intimacy and the oxytocin that's in your body when you're having sex, and then you mix that all up with you know like when it gets weird you know what i mean when they're crossing your boundaries and then some when you are your boundaries are nowhere in sight anymore and you're doing things you never would normally agree to when you find yourself questioning why am i even doing this why did i even say yes what's what's going on when you're in the middle of it you feel shame and guilt from the sex because the things that were done to you or the things that you took part in that would normally not be part of your moral makeup or your moral compass. So all of this is signs that you're being manipulated and sex is the means by which you're being manipulated. It can make it so that the shame and guilt is also part of the trauma bonding and it ties you to that narcissistic person. I just wanted to start with that briefly to get a brief understanding of sadistic narcissist and sex. And now I want to read you some quotes from some survivors of narcissistic abuse who had extremely sadistic narcissists. I am hoping that this helps anyone out there that is suffering from having this happen to them to not feel so alone and hopefully alleviate some of the shame or guilt that you might have around it. So remember that you were groomed into the situation. It does not just happen overnight for the most part. I'm hoping that the understanding and seeing that this is part of the sadistic sexual makeup of some sadistic narcissists and that can help you have some more awareness of what you went through or are going through and to see that none of this is your fault. So here are some words by survivors. He called me from work and he told me to get my body ready because he wanted to come home and rock my world. I was excited since he hadn't really touched me in months and I thought it was making an effort to reconnect with me. When he got home, he pulled out a massage table and asked me to lay down. We always used to give sensual massages, so I laid down, and he began tying my legs and arms to the posts on the table. He then blindfolded me. For a minute, I thought he was just being kinky, and it wasn't really going in the direction that I wanted or was hoping for, meaning I was going to be degraded and meaningless sex was going to happen instead of reconnecting and lovemaking. I got sad, but I stayed quiet. He walked out of the room. When he came back, he asked me to open my mouth and I realized then that it wasn't him. He brought another man without my consent. We had experienced threesomes before, but was always spoken about before. I thought maybe he thought it was a fantasy of mine. And I do remember telling him that I'm not into threesomes. 
And so I realized this was purely to degrade me. My heart sank, but I went along with it. All the while I was praying the guy wasn't one of his friends or someone disgusting. Eventually, he took the blindfold off and I saw it was someone from a previous experience we had had together. My ex left the room and went down the street to the bar and left me with this guy. I didn't know this guy. It was awkward. I asked him to leave and I cried a lot. My ex ended up telling me he could no longer perform, so he was trying to please me through other men. It was all bullshit. He, he succeeded in degrading me. I felt a lot of shame for a long time until I did the work to rid myself of it. Ultimately, he let me know that he could not just have sex and he required different forms of degradation in order to get excited. And here is another one from another survivor. The beginning was normal but exciting. He wanted to get me pregnant real fast and I think I was a little annoyed since I did not want more children. He protested a lot about how he wasn't into anal, which was fine by me. Gradually, it all got rougher and more adventurous and I was still fine with it. Pretty soon, it started to really get into anal for the first time, according to him, without my consent. He refused to wear a condom or use lube. He got rougher. He started to tell me that I liked it rough and it, he wasn't getting off on it. I made it really clear that whatever I may be willing to put up with in the bedroom, he had no place doing that outside the bedroom. But of course, he never got that. He liked to tell me that I have daddy issues and I don't. He needed me to tell him that I was a whore and call him daddy. He had rape fantasy. He started using very strong language during sex, was soon spilled out into our normal life. He refused at one point to kiss me anymore and never touched me during foreplay. He wanted to watch porn and suggested going to swingers clubs, which I wasn't going to do. At the end, I had to perform completely and he pretty much stopped closing his eyes and looking away, desperately trying to pretend I wasn't there. Sometimes he would deny sex even though I knew he wanted it. He resented his desire for me. I feel that he was put out with my appetite being as big as his and that I was adventurous and open-minded. For someone different, that particular area of a relationship would undoubtedly cause a great deal of trauma. Another survivor wrote, my ex changed once we got married. He decided he really only wanted anal sex. At first I thought it was because of the forbidden, but over the course of six years, the more pain I was in, the better it was for him. He started secretly filming me while it was going on and ended up really hurting me a few times. At one point he said if I had an orgasm or enjoyed it, it ruined it for him. So I was supposed to act like it hurt, which wasn't hard because it actually did. Finally, the show Handmaid's Tale came out and he got the costume and suddenly wanted to simulate rape scenes. And he wanted me reciting lines from the show. He would make himself a throne and present himself and I had to accept him. His famous line for how he, he got me to agree to all of this was that there's a princess out there who will. He was sleeping with hookers behind my back and ended up giving me HPV, which I fortunately tested negative for later. A habit of smashing my face into the bed while he was orgasming and screaming obscenities at me made it so that I thought I would never enjoy sex again. He degraded me for not looking 16 years old anymore and said I had to work harder and that this pain was part of being old and undesirable. This all happened when I was 30. Finally, at the end, he hurt me bad enough that I needed a procedure and was bleeding. I will never do this again. And to sum it all up, another survivor of sadistic narcissist wrote, my ex peed on me, my body and my face, wanted me to cry and beg him to stop spit in my mouth and on my face. He would choke me during sex until I passed out and when he was done, he switched to a kind mode and asked if it had been too rough. He made me dress like a preteen during sex and wanted me to pretend to be 14 years old. He also had me crawling on all fours while wearing a leash choker plus a gag ball. And that way I could not say the safety word that we had. Sometimes he would use a whip as well always having the music so loud that no one could hear me. His eyes seemed at that point to turn black. I realized that there can be a crossover here with some of what was said and a BDSM type of dynamic, but that relationship is a consensual relationship, not one of coercion. And I have another video on that. If you wanna check it out, I'll put it in the description. Basically, I just wanted to illustrate some of the ways which a narcissist hurts you to gain supply through sex. If you have experience with this or if there's anything more you'd like to hear about it 
or if you have help for people and what you've done to recover from being treated this way, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe.